Players are on campus. Can Hugh Freeze bring them home? Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much. For making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Please be uh, w- welcoming back Jake Crane, host of Crane & Company. It's been too long, brother. Happy uh, Happy New Year to you. Yeah, Zach. Happy New Year, man. Uh, appreciate you having me on. It's always a good time to, to come and talk and, and see what Hugh Freeze has got going. I know there's a lot of excitement on the planes. Yeah, so there's a, there's a batch of guys that are wrapping up visits today as this comes out on Thursday Jake, and then it sounds like there's another batch of guys coming in this weekend, which is obviously exciting, and uh, they'll get to see a great basketball game between Auburn and Arkansas. But when you look at this list and the reports of guys that are that are coming or have been here already this week, it's a who's who of offensive linemen, Jake. Yeah. And I guess my question to you is, what should Auburn fans expect as far as reconstructing this offensive line and if this coaching staff will, in fact, get it done or not? Yeah, you know, Zach, the, the game's won and lost up front. We all know that. I feel like yeah. I come on here and talk about this all the time. And if you want to bridge the gap to where Hugh Freeze and Auburn and the Auburn fan base, you know, want them to be, to get closer to where Alabama is, to get closer to where Georgia is, you know, to have that, you know, little bit of a resurgence like we've seen uh, with some teams uh, here lately, and Auburn's a place that can do it, you got to get the guys up front. Right. You know, th- there's a lot of, of different systems that work, but no offensive system works if you cannot block anybody. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast, whether it's in pass pro, or whether it's in run block. And so it's nice to see big names on the list. You like to see big guys on the edge that can move, guys that can do versatile things. And in the identity of the offense that I think Auburn you know, wants to have, even though Hugh Freeze isn't the quote-unquote OC, there's going to be his fingerprints all over this offense, to be able to work that RPO game, to be able to be balanced, to be able to make the plays in the end and give those skill players time that you can get in the by the droves now in the transfer portal, you got to have it up front, not only on the offensive line, but on the defensive line as well. That's been the difference. There's a whole hell of a lot more wide receivers and DBs running around out there than there are offensive tackles and defensive ends that can play and win in this league. Yeah. Are you surprised how long it's taken some of these bigger name guys? And I mean, just to name a few that Auburn's having on, um, Damian George, I believe, is coming at some point Mm -hmm. this week. Gunnar Britton, the Western Kentucky offensive tackle, that's obviously a big one. Marcellus Johnson of Eastern Michigan. He he's been reported. There's um there's a guy from Baylor that a lot of people want. Yep. UCF. I mean, there, there there's a ton of startable ready guys that have been in the portal for a minute, right, Jake? I mean, we're talking about a month or so. Are you surprised how long it's taking some of these guys to make their decisions, or is this just kind of what the new set forty five day window of being able to enter the portal? Is this what it's going to look like moving forward? Yeah, you know, I, I am a little surprised at, at how you know drawn out it's been because these guys have been through the recruiting process before. Yeah. This isn't their first go around. Uh, now, look, is it better for business maybe to, to sweeten up some NIL deals to hang out there a little bit longer, mm-hmm. create a little more leverage for yourself, uh, knowing that you're a take regardless, especially at a place like Auburn that's offering better for business as far as the player goes? As, as the, the, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you have to look at it now from, from that point of view. They wanted in the business. Now they're in the business, uh, and and they're going to act like it. So uh, t- at some point, it doesn't surprise me. But a lot of these guys want to get where they're going. They understand the importance of getting in there early and not letting this thing draw out too quick. Because just like we see with high school players, sometimes spots fill up. Now in Auburn's case, uh, it feels like you got 375 scholarships that you can spend out there uh, on the on the offensive line and, and on the defensive line. So Auburn is not hurting for spots. Uh, but I am a little bit surprised, but I know the reasoning why. Yeah, I mean, you, you want to create as much value as possible, maybe raise the bids up. I get that. And, but it is interesting. Like There, there are some guys um, that were on Auburn's campus for official visits like the first weekend of the portal being open, and they're still out there, and it doesn't sound like Auburn's reaching out to these guys 
anymore. So well, the way well, that they, yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, well, my thing is that again, just like in any evaluation, I, I mean, you're looking at at a lot of things to be able to come in. It's so hard, and especially in the sport of football, when you have so many people on the roster, you have 11 guys on the field at once to just bring guys in off the street. Hey, welcome in. Uh, we'll, we'll just mold you in and blend you in, and you can pick it up as you go. You got to make the right decisions, just like when you're evaluating high school kids to try and get them to the next level because you do only have a certain amount of, of scholarships to give an amount of spots to fill on that roster. So, you know, Zach, when, when I look at, at this thing as a whole, uh, I, I think they're going through the evaluation process the best they can, the best they know how. And when you're putting together a staff, it's like building the parachute on the way down. It can throw off the timeline a little bit. Jake, some Auburn fans concerned that Auburn – uh, they have not added a transfer quarterback in this cycle. Should they be concerned, or do you like what Robbie Ashford could possibly bring in a Hugh Freeze offense? Well, you know, the way Robbie threw the ball at the end of the year against Alabama, if he can throw anywhere remotely close to that with his ability to run, you know, your balance and ability to keep the defense even and maybe even take a spy out of coverage to help him in the passing game helps. But you want to create competition just like at every single position on the field. You want to have that good competition and the best guy is going to win out. Now, when you look at, at the guys that are in the portal that you can still bring in, I mean, you look at Spencer Sanders, you look at Grayson McCall, who you feel like is still getting talked to, even though there was that academic issue. There are plenty of guys guys that are out there and more Zach that will get in the portal. This thing really is kind of just beginning. It's still in its early stages. You're going to have guys leave after spring and things like that when they realize they're not going to win the uh, win the job. Uh, but uh, look, you want to create competition. I think Robbie's got a good chance uh, to, to be able to do that, and, and that's what he wants. So uh, a lot of people are saying that, Jake, and it totally makes sense. I'm not disagreeing with you. But I asked this question to a, a guest earlier this week, and, and I want to hear your thoughts. As far as the sake of competition goes, You've seen Holden Gurner throw. I mean, he had the cleanest throwing motion of all of Auburn's quarterbacks last year, and that's not the best bar to set. But Holden Gurner, when he's throwing that thing, it looks like a dart. There's very little wasted motion in his mechanics. Is he ready? Is he ready in a Hugh Freeze offense in year two, learning the second op- second college offense in two years, coming out of high school? Like, Can he take that step to compete with Robbie? Or in your mind, does it have to be a transfer? No, I, look, I, I think he can. I, I was the most excited about him as any quarterback on the roster, including Robbie Ashford, uh, sure. before the year, just looking at his tape and looking how natural of a passer he is. He's not a thrower. He's a passer. He's got nuance. Uh, he's got feel. Got a little bit of experience this year. I know it was a crazy year one for him. I mean, you come in, the head coach gets fired. There's a lot going on. But the system that Hugh Freeze runs, it's very effective, and it's not super-duper intricate. I, I want people to think – it's similar to a – it's got flavors of the Gus Malzahn run game with the RPO action, but a much more intricate and a much more effective passing game. That That's really ha- how you got to think of this thing. You know, Gus's uh, passing system was so elementary, uh, yeah. it was easy to defend. Even former players, Anthony Schwartz and those guys will tell you that. But I think Holden right. has the ability. He's got the arm strength. He's got the anticipation. It, it seems like he's a smart kid, uh, and and he's able to react naturally. So I think Holden's got a good chance. I think the Auburn quarterback situation is a little bit better than what people give it uh, that don't really understand who's in that room and are just looking at it from a 30,000-foot view. Yeah. I want to continue the conversation about the offense. Something happened uh, Wednesday morning. and I, Tell me if I'm reading too much into it, Jake. We'll get Jake's thoughts on that in just a moment right here. Unlocked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online is the number one place to wager on all of your sports actions. They've got more props, odds, and lines than anyone out there. Be sure to show them some love for the rest of this college basketball season or the NFL season or NBA, whatever it may be. They've got you covered. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. Jake Crane, host of Crane and Company, our guest. So Hugh Freeze retweeted me Wednesday morning. And we're doing a uh, we're doing a stat of the day series at auburndaily.com, Jake. And here's the stat of the day that I tweeted out that Hugh Freeze retweeted. He said, or, or I tweeted out, the average season from a top wide receiver under Hugh Freeze is 891 yards receiving, 61 catches, and seven touchdowns. So he retweeted that. Do you think that's him sending a message saying, hey, like, hey, this is effective? You know, if you're in the portal and you're a good receiver, like, hey, because anything happening on social media, you just kind of assume it's for recruiting, right? Uh, is he yeah. sending a message or is he just kind of saying like, hey, yeah, yeah, well, maybe maybe we'll pass the ball more this year? 
Yeah, you know, to quote Alec Baldwin and Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, always be closing. Uh, I mean, that's what that's what you're doing. It, yeah. it never ends. It literally recruiting never ends. And now with the transfer portal, uh, it, it just added more juice to it. So, yes, right. you are trying to get every advantage you can. You want eyes on those stats. You want those receivers who may be coming down to the last two schools. And these guys, again, especially in the transfer portal, obviously it's a 40-year decision coming out of high school. Uh, it's not a four-year decision. It's a 40-year decision. But these guys in the transfer portal, that they're doing this for a reason. And they understand what goes on. They understand what they need to be looking at. And that's production. Most of them mm. think they have a chance to go to the league. So when you see numbers like that, and then you look at some of the receivers that he coached when he was there, you look up in the NFL now, they're running around everywhere. Uh, it, it does make it, you know, it gives it credibility. That's what it does. It gives it credibility. It's the same thing when Saban goes into these five-star recruits and he hands them that spreadsheet and he says, look, Man, you play defensive end. Well, guess what? The last five starting defensive ends I've had make an average of you know, $12.5 million a year in the NFL. You want to be rich? Come play for me. Here's the credibility. I don't even have to sell you. Turn on the TV. So, look, credibility, it, it not only gets you in the door, it breaks the floor. Yeah, I, I think that's such a big part of it all. And then I'm just going to kind of put you on the spot here. If that's the average, I'm not expecting Auburn, an Auburn receiver to hit that average this year. I'm just not. I hope I'm wrong. But if they did, if somebody was in the, the ballpark of 890 receiving yards, 60 catches, and seven touchdowns, Jake, is there somebody on this Auburn roster where you're like, yeah, I, I could see it being this person? Yeah, you know, I think Camden, Camden Brown could do it. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think he's got the body type. I think he's got the ability. Uh, we saw little flashes of it. Tarvaris Dawson is another guy. And, and here's the thing about that, Zach. You know, it may be a guy coming in from the transfer portal that's not even in Auburn yet that they're talking right. to. But but when I look at that number, Hugh Freeze has done this everywhere he's been. Mm -hmm. Like like it's it's the offense has worked everywhere he's been, and and he does keep evolving. It is that three man uh, surface method that he uses, affecting three different areas of the field at the same time, which puts defenders in conflict. But it works. I mean, it does. And and when I watch him, and and the the biggest credit that I can give a coach and, and the, the hardest way to pin a coach down, it's like pinning down a good pitcher in major league baseball. They're always adding stuff, right? You're, you're always evolving. It's not the same book over and over again. It's the same identity, but they're giving you different things. That's what, and, and I hate to keep bringing that Gus miles on. That's what caused Gus. He never evolved. He right. wrote the book on a no huddle offense and then started getting slower and slower every single year. Not only did he not evolve, he went away from what got him there. He didn't dance with the one that brought him. Hugh mm -hmm. Freeze is able to dance with the one that brought him. But, hey, they may have a new hairstyle. You know, hey, maybe that, you know, uh, they got a new dress, some Gucci or something. I, I, I don't know. But he's able to evolve. And, and that, that's what I think makes him special and hard to pin down. Yeah, the idea of Camden Brown, and you look at these other big body receivers on this list, like Laquan Treadwell is one. Let me pull it up. Dante yeah. Moncrief, Laquan Treadwell, Demorier Stringfellow, which I forgot all about him. You know, those were the guys at Ole Miss. The last Monsters. two years at Liberty, uh, Demario Douglas, who was very effective, and you know, he was 5'8", right? So, I mean, th they've got different guys that have been able to excel in his system. They have different strengths, which kind of makes it easier to say, okay, yeah, it could be Camden Brown. It could be Tarvarish Dawson, like you said. It could be... I don't know, uh, you know, Javarius Johnson, who led Auburn in receiving a year ago. I mean, it could be any of these guys because he's done it with all types of dudes. And, and to me, yeah. that's where a lot of the value is. Well, what you want is you want yeah, uh, all of them to do a little bit of it. I mean, that's the, yeah. the whole goal. I, obviously, you're going to be your number one guy. Typically, you do. Uh, you, you can rank them in order, but they, they're all effective, right? You look at these teams that are scoring all these points. How are they doing it? It's not just one guy. Sure. You know, it's there's multiple guys that threaten you. They're able to hit these big plays. Like USC, for example. Jordan Addison didn't even play in that game. But, I mean, you got Jerry Rice's kid. Uh, you got that one little witch they have that nobody can tackle once he catches the ball for at least 15 yards. Uh, you got to have multiple guys because, again, you can't double everybody. I mean, how do you beat how do you beat uh, you know Georgia in two man when it's third and nine and they're able to, to shadow the safeties and be able to bracket? Well, if you got three guys that can make the play, there's only two safeties that can help bracket. So, again, it's just like anything. Uh, you want guys that can do a little bit of things that are different. TCU is a great example of that. Look at look at uh, uh, Quentin Johnson and Darius Davis and guys that are different sizes that do different things, but it works well together because it stresses different parts of the defense and then run after catch, 
yards after contact, things like that. Uh, yeah. And a lot of that comes down to the player that you get, how good the player is you get. So yeah, I think it shows his evaluation works. That's why anybody that's panicking right now over evaluation or time spent, I would just tell you, relax. The guy's here now. Yeah. The I want to I want to get your thoughts on something and zoom out just a little bit with some things that happened in the SEC West yesterday. Auburn's first real test of the 2023 season involved the Texas A&M Aggies. Did that game get easier to win? or tougher to win yesterday. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. Are you looking for a delicious treat, but don't want all the fat and calories? Then you have to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and I know everybody's goal is to eat a little healthier this year. And look, a lot of people want to eat healthy without giving up you know, these sweet treats. Well, with Built Bar, you don't have to. So what makes Built Bar so good? They're covered 100% in real chocolate. And that's right, real chocolate. And they are high in protein, low in calories. Most bars just have 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. So be sure to check out our friends at Built Bar today. Jake Crane, before we jump into Texas A&M and their interesting hire they made yesterday, how can people check out everything that you've got going on, buddy? Yeah, man. Just uh, It's really easy. You can go to YouTube. It's Crane & Company. We do a live show from 6.30 to 8 Central every weekday. Uh, typically release content on the weekend as well. Do a live show on Sunday morning, uh, kind of recapping college football and previewing the NFL. So go to YouTube. It's Crane & Company, C-R-A-I-N. Uh, yes, Kurt Crane. That, that was my father, so his la our last name spelled like that. I know a lot of Auburn fans listening to this are going to know who that is. Uh, or sure. go to the Daily Wire. Go to Daily Wire Plus. You can sign up there, catch us live. We have a separate chat outside of YouTube that we go there, and we're having call-ins now uh, starting on every Friday that if you're a member, you're able to call on the show live and, and we're able to talk some ball with you. Yeah, be sure to give those guys some love. All right, so <laughs> Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M, they hired uh, Bobby Petrino mm -hmm. to be their offensive coordinator and uh, didn't really feel real when that news broke on Twitter. I'm like, is this legitimate? But it is, uh, and he will take over play-calling duties. That is the report from ESPN anyway. Does this make A&M better, Jake? Yes, it makes him a lot better. This is a high IQ play. And, you know, spare me with the people that are like, oh, it's Bobby Petrino. What a terrible person. Uh, okay, people make mistakes, number one. Is Bobby Petrino a good person? He's not. And not just because uh -huh. that that situation in Arkansas. He's just not a nice person. But And I hate to burst of people's bubble out there that don't know. A lot of these coaches that look nice on TV and they smile and they say the right things and they're crying at ceremonies, some of them aren't nice people. Urban Meyer is a great example of that. So, again, you don't have to be a nice person to win in this situation, but Jimbo needed to give up the play calling duty. They do have talent at A&M, even though it feels like half of it's in the transfer portal right now. And Bobby right. Petrino's a great offensive mind. I mean, Auburn fans know that as well. It's it's no secret. He's had success everywhere he's went offensively. And, you you know, you buy low when you sell high. It's a great situation. Uh, and, and to see Jimbo step back and, and let him call the plays. Now, we'll see, you know, if Jimbo will let him call it the whole year. If it's not going good early, is Jimbo just going to absolutely, you know, pull a Jody Foster and go in his panic room and take the play calling over again? I don't know. Right. Uh, but I think it's a great hire. Uh, and, you know, spare me with the, oh, it's Bobby Petrino. What a horrible person. Look, it's 2023. Auburn's first real test is going to College Station mm. next year. Yep. In your mind, I mean, this is one of the four or five, like, toss-up games that you kind of circle in the schedule. It's like, all right, if you go three and two in these games, like, all of a sudden, like, hey, maybe you're nine and three, eight and four at the end of the year. So this is one of those ones where, like, Hugh Freeze needs to win if he's going to do something special and kind of, quote-unquote, overachieve in his first year. It's impossible to predict this far out, Jake, but just kind of gut feeling. How much tougher did that win get because of this? Oh, I think it got a lot tougher. I think it got a lot tougher. I think you have to score a touchdown and a half, two more touchdowns than what you originally would have had to yeah. uh, going into that game. Now, look, we'll, we'll see the way the rosters look. Uh, look, am I going to bet against A&M? You know, blowing it, blowing it in a game? No, I'm not. They're the best there's ever been at it when it comes down to it or not living sure. up to expectations. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to say that can't happen, and it would be a huge win. I mean, anytime you're able to go on the road, not only in the SEC but within your own division and, and go get a win at a, a crazy place like Kyle Field, uh, you'll take it, and, and it can help springboard to you and the other things. But uh, it got harder. Make no mistake, Bobby Petrino makes A&M much more viable. I think it makes them much more competent on offense, and it makes them much more dangerous overall as a team. I also think play Auburn having to go there earlier in the season 
isn't ideal because I think if this thing does go south, it's not going to go south in week, I think it's week four or week five. Um, it's going to go south in like week nine or week 10, I think. Yeah, man, you know, I, I'm going to disagree with you there, Zach. I'd rather oh, yeah? get you okay. early. I, I'd rather get you early before there's too much. I, I know there's a lot of tape on Hugh Freeze at Liberty, but rosters change, play calling changes. Uh, I'd rather get you early without you knowing all my pitches. Like at least have some. I know it's kind of in that area where you really start to self-scout. You start self-scouting after week three, really. You keep, obviously, track of the numbers and your personnel and formations and adjustments and tendencies. But uh, I would rather get them early on the road. If I'm going to get a tough road game, give it to me early. Uh, they're still a little nervous. They don't know who they are really yet. We don't really know who we are. So uh, I would rather have it early in the season. That's interesting. All right. Um haven't talked to you a ton since Hugh Freeze has been hired. He's been here. You know, we, we saw what he did on early signing day. Give me a grade on what Hugh has done so far in your mind. I, I, I think I give him an A. Uh, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't give him an A plus right now. It, it would have taken some, you know. Look, I tell you what, flipping Kedrick Falk and Kalen Lee and these guys late, I'm, they're going to be huge additions. Look what they're doing at the Under Armour game right now. I, I mean, did you see? Uh, did you see Kedrick Falk weighed in at two seventy down there? Monster! Look at him, and he looks oh, like he weighs two thirty, and he looks like he weighs two thirty. That kid may oh, come in and play day one. He but may like, start I mean, edge, dude. He really oh, it's might. So nice, it, Zach. Isn't it just so nice to look, be able to look at a recruit on the line and be like? Man, look at this guy. He looks like what they're supposed to look like. Yeah. You know, look at some, of, some of the guys that, you know, we've had now, you know, Derek Hall and them balled out and stuff like that. But uh, those those types, getting those players in there up front that can really do it. So I'd give him an A, man. I mean, you, you got a lot going on in the transfer portal. You were able to weather the storm of the negativity. It passed over really quick. I thought he had a, a great appearance on game day. So, mm -hmm. uh, look, I, I, I think at this point, Hugh's done a really good job. He's the guy I wanted to get the job. I made no mistake about that for the past – you know, two years really. So I think he's hit the ground running. I like the staff he's put together. They seem excited. Uh, there seems to be a lot of positive momentum in all really right young now. staff, young, really staff. young. It's, it's hungry. Look, and, and, uh, that's what you want, but you do have a mix of some old heads like Philip Montgomery and, well, and the, the coordinators Wadden. are older and Perfect. then the, and then everybody yeah. else is younger, and then there's Wesley McGriff. Who's That's right. Still you don't hungry. want a bunch of Dumbledores, and you don't want a bunch of Harry Potters. You want a nice mix. You know, you want a Professor McGonagall in there. You know, you want a Snape in there, somebody in the middle. I think he the did true a heroes job. of the, the story. true heroes, right. the, the underground heroes. You know what I'm saying? So I, <laughs> I think like I thought he's done a really good job. And and you know, when you look at it from the staff, recruiting, momentum, saying the right things, dodging the bullets, deflecting the hate, I give him an A. I, I'm with you, man. One more time. How can people uh, give you some love, brother? Hey, just go to YouTube, man. Daily Wire Plus. It's Crane and Company, C R A I N uh, and Company. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify as well. If you just do the audio thing, uh, Zach, it's always great coming on with you, my friend. And I think Auburn's in a whole heck of a lot better place Whew. than they were the last time that I came on here. Uh, I think so. I think so. Whoever's making y'all's TikToks does an incredible job, by the way. Thank you, man. It's look, I, I don't know really anything about TikTok. I just talk about stuff on the show and then they use, you know, speaking of Harry Potter, their their witchcraft and wizardry. So yeah, I'll give him a shout out. I'll tell funny thing is, not gonna say his name, but he's a former star he's a former uh Texas State quarterback. Interesting. All right. Yeah. There you yeah. go. There you go. That's Jake Crane. Be sure to give him some love. Be sure to check out all of my written work, AuburnDaily.com. We'll see you tomorrow. This has been Locked On Auburn.